Yeah. 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 And then turn it off real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to our November 16th Littleton Planning Board meeting at 6 o'clock. And I'd like to start with the National Anthem. I mean, with the Pledge of Allegiance. No. <laughs> Please, no. No, National Anthem. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't think I would have sung it, but I can sing it. Hey, we have um, six o'clock um, Littleton hazarded mitigation plan. We have MAP MAPC here to Can you speak do up, a little. Mark? Speak up. We have our first order of business is the Littleton's hazardous mitigation plan. Metro M MAPC is going to do a presentation for it. Do you want to do it there? So, so I'd like to introduce um, um, Martin Pillsbury and uh, Jennifer Wallach, if I'm saying that right. Yeah. Yeah. So we're welcome very much. Very much. So I'm going to lead off with an introduction, then Jennifer will give some of the uh, content of the plan uh, that we're working on. Uh, and um, do I have to ask you to push it, or is there a way I can control that? Would you, you just not. Ahead, please? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we, so we do have a presentation here. We'll start with the background. Uh, go ahead. Um, so hazard mitigation planning is uh, the town is engaged in actually updating a plan that we did for the town about five or six years ago uh, and this is a process that actually has an, a five-year renewal cycle that needs to be updated on every five years going back to the beginning these plans are being done across the whole country under a national program that's run by fema the federal emergency management agency uh, according to uh, a law that was passed in 2000 the disaster mitigation act uh, and one of the guidelines it, uh, in, in that act is how to set up a local hazard mitigation plan at the town and city or county level across the country. <coughs> there are also state level hazard mitigation plans. And in fact, Massachusetts has just completed literally two weeks ago its update from their previous 2018 plan or 2023 plan. In terms of municipal plans, um, we are now working here to um, help the community develop its newest plan because it does have to be renewed every five years. Um, a pre-disaster pre mitigation plan is a term that we used to be used, a term that isn't being used as much lately. It's basically about what you can do before a disaster happens. To distinguish that from post-disaster and, and disaster recovery, what you do after a disaster happens. Pre-disaster is to thinking about what a community can do. I like to boil it down to stay out of harm's way. To make, look at your infrastructure, look at your development patterns, and then compare that to where the hazards are flood, winter hazards, wind hazards, every kind of hazard, even earthquake is in the plan. Um, it's a five-year update cycle, like I said, so we're going through this process to get you up to date with the current plan. And um, one of the benefits of having a current plan that's approved by FEMA is it makes the community eligible to receive what can be very significant FEMA grants for actual projects on the ground, infrastructure like drainage projects and that sort of improvements that would address the hazards that are identified in the plan. Go ahead. <coughs> So start with what's in the green box on the upper left. That's sort of like the definition, the working definition we use, because hazard mitigation isn't a term that r rolls off the tongue. It's not a household word, like, as you might say. Uh, re reducing impacts of natural hazards uh, through strategies that include policies, projects, and programs. So that's a very high-level definition. We're all about reducing uh, the, re the uh, vulnerability of the com community. And this is a plan about natural hazards. The list you see on the right in blue all kinds of natural hazards, flooding, wind, you know, wind events from different kinds of storms, winter hazards, geologic hazards like earthquakes and landslides, wildfires, forest fires, brush fires, extreme temperatures, drought. Uh, it's not about other kinds of hazards like chemical releases or radiation or terrorism and home, homeland security. There's whole other parts of FEMA that work on those. Uh, but this is narrowing in strictly on natural hazards. Uh, and we ask ourselves these two questions you see on the lower left here as we start to embark on putting a plan like this together for our community. What preventative actions are being taken now in the community to reduce, reduce your risks uh, to damages from natural hazards? And more importantly, what additional actions 
can be taken in the future to increase the community's resilience. So that's kind of the, the high level goal of doing these plans. Go ahead. So FEMA put this program together to try to what they call break the cycle or at least slow down the cycle of repetitive disaster, rebuild, disaster again, rebuild again, and on and on in some communities. This is, I think Littleton is one of the communities that doesn't have this quite as severe a problem. But there are many places around, keeping in mind this is a federal program, it goes across the whole country, there are many places along in the country where um, it, these kind of disasters are not a one-time deal. Uh, disaster comes, there's funding that comes in to help people rebuild, and then they rebuild in the same place in the same way, and they put, set themselves up for just the next disaster happening. So FEMA was like, the, wanted to say, yeah, we have a lot of resources to help communities recover. They've always had that. What was new about this program is what can we do before the disaster happens? to make the community less vulnerable so that when the <coughs> events happen, you can't stop the natural hazard events from happening, but when they happen, there might be less damage in property, loss of life, all of that sort of thing. Right. So hazard mitigation is a br it's kind of a, a, a blanket umbrella term. It's not one method. We sometimes break, break it down into these six categories of types of actions that can contribute to making the community more resilient. So some of them are structural measures, but some of them are non-structural, like regulatory and policy measures. You see here prevention uh, is the first one. So like if that's, that's the one I particularly call getting out of harm's way. Through the tools the community has, through planning, zoning, and other measures, uh, making sure that new development and new infrastructure um, you're aware of if it's being put into a hazardous area. Maybe you're steering it away from those areas to the extent you can, or if they're there, you're accounting for the hazards that they may be facing in, in the way that they're developed, like perhaps buildings are more elevated in a flood area or something like that. Property protection has to do with the fact that these communities all throughout Eastern Mass have been developed for decades, for centuries, and many earlier developments got placed in what we now know to be flood zones, but maybe weren't thought about back then. And so we have to also accommodate the existing developments that is in areas of hazard now. They're not, that those properties, for the most part, are not going to go away. They're still going to be in a hazard area. What can be done to make those existing facilities more resilient? And that's where you get into things like building elevations and floodplains, elevating the utilities within the basements of buildings so that the more expensive assets, junction boxes, utilities, furnaces, et cetera, may be even up above the level where there might be flood damage. Public <coughs> education is actually an important part of it because individual homeowners, residents, uh, small businesses all have properties and are subject to some of these hazards and there's a lot that they can do to be aware of their own risks and vulnerabilities and what could, what resources they can uh, use to make themselves more, more uh, resilient. Protecting natural resources, so this is the one I call sort of letting Mother Nature do a lot of the work for us. Uh, you know, protecting those wetlands, protecting those floodplains, letting the, them do the job that they were intended to do to buffer the storms uh, from, from our developed areas and that sort of thing. Then you get into structural projects, and this is where you have some of the big ticket sort of infrastructure projects that may be drainage upgrades and um, generators and lots of other things that would be, be things that you would purchase. This is the category of items, some of which could be eligible for FEMA grants when you have an approved plan. So be thinking about, okay, what kind of, does the community identify, has a community identified some drainage upgrades that would, you know, solve an existing drainage and flooding problem. Some of those can actually be eligible for FEMA grants. It's not easy, I'm not going to say it's an easy reach, F applying for a federal grant is always a little difficult, but the money is there to apply for certain kinds of things. And finally, emergency services protection. And this is look, thinking about the very facilities that your community relies on to provide protection, police, fire, public works facilities. We want to, above all, make sure that they themselves are not harmed so that you don't lose the capacity then to use those facilities to serve the rest of the community. And so making sure that that's a very high priority too. And we have had some communities where like the first place they flooded, was a police station, the basement of the police station, which had like a lot of communications equipment in it. I think that was North Reading some years ago. So it's the kind of thing where, you know, you want to make sure that you keep the utility and the usefulness of the critical facility of your community that you then rely on to help everyone else in the community. So those are kind of the, the sort of array of measures that we usually think about as a, as a set of tools under hazard mitigation. 
The other thing we'll talk about in more recent years, maybe this this wasn't as prominent in plans from five or ten or more years ago, uh, but we're now more and more aware that some of these very storm events, floods, wind events that we're talking about, drought, are you know being influenced by longer-term trends of climate change. So there's a lot of overlap, is essentially the message here, between what we're thinking about for the current, the historic and the current level of threat you have, and where those threats may be in the future actually may be more severe. These kind of storms may be more severe or happen more frequently in the future. So just to be aware of that as we're putting these plans together. Go ahead. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer now uh, to talk through with the planning process and the next steps in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Hello, everyone. You can go to the next slide. So now I'm going to kind of talk about what we're doing, why we're here, um, and I'll begin by going through the plan development process. So to start out this project, we did a lot of research on hazard identification and mapping of Littleton. With that, we met um, with the team that is made up of Littleton um, staff that are working on this with us. I'll go over who's on that team in a little bit, but that was meeting number one. Then we took back that information that we gathered and did an assessment of risks and vulnerabilities, and then met again with the team to review existing mitigation, um, come up with mitigation goals for Littleton, and now we're here, the first public meeting. I'll go into a little bit of the asks that I have for you all um, later on in this presentation, but from here we will go to meetings three and four, where we'll update the mitigation strategies from what we've been able to learn to that point. From there we will prepare the draft plan, come again uh, to all of you to show you what we've come up with. And then once that is all reviewed, we and we get um, approval from MEMA and FEMA, it'll be handed back over to you for town adoption. So as I said, there is a local hazard mitigation team that is working on this. So that is made up of numerous representatives. We have town administrator, planning folks, fire department, um, elder and human services, police, conservation, public works, um, input from uh, light and water. And basically what we're asking for them to do is to participate in those four meetings that I mentioned to help with the goals, to provide any of the data and local um, information that we need and then of course to finalize the middle uh, the mitigation actions uh, for the final plan so now what we've heard from these meetings is what I'll get into so we know that there is a lot of examples of critical infrastructure and facilities throughout Littleton so for example you know you have the town hall the fire station the police station pretty standard you know regardless of the towns that we're working with um, for infrastructure, we talked about pump station, town wells, water towers, the mill <coughs> pond dam, um, and then community facilities, of course, schools. We um, heard about some housing, life care center, um, medical um, facility. So those were some of those critical locations that we heard about. And then from there, we talked about local hazard areas. So now this is areas that are known to experience flooding or fire or snow. Um, and you can see, I know it's very small, but that map is depicting uh, some of those areas there. Uh, so for example, for flooding, um, King Street was noted, Neshoba Road, Beaver Brook, Great Road, Gilson Road, uh, snow hazards were identified as well. Um, Nagog, Hill, Nagog Hill Road and Newtown Road. And then there were a few areas for brush fires as well um, that you'll see listed there, Oak Hill, Morgan property, um, Frost and Whitcomb, et cetera. So in this plan, we talk about a variety of natural hazards, heat, wildfires, earthquakes, drought, extreme precipitation. As you know, these are all becoming um, a lot more common uh, in our country and even across Massachusetts. So these maps show that and are why we're here. So this is just a list of some severe storms that Littleton has experienced. Um, you see it dates back around 11 years to Hurricane Sandy. Um, we have some severe winter storms. Um, however, as you see, the last one listed here was March 2018. So I think, unfortunately, that means we're probably due, which is a good thing that you are working on this plan now. Yeah. So. Something else that we discussed in great depth with the team was what existing mitigation measures 
Littleton already has in place. So we know about the LEPC and then your Comprehensive Emergency Management Plan, your SEMP, that covers some of this. We know for floods, you do you know the basin cleaning, drainage maintenance. Uh, you also are in the National Flood Insurance Program, of course, um, and a variety of other different flood mitigation measures in place as well. Um, and then for fire, you know there's permits for outdoor burning, subdivision plans reviewed by the fire department for uh, fire safety, for other winter hazards. You have DPW who does a lot of work on that front. Um, and then also for wind and winter in general as well, tree trimming, and then the Mass uh, State Building Code kind of works with that as well. So next steps. Yeah, so this is a little bit more on that timeline. So we will meet again with the team in January, taking what we were able to learn from uh, this meeting and the last one. We will then meet again uh, in April and then we will come back here in May to again present that draft plan and get any public comments on that. And then finalize the plan in May, submitting it to MEMA and FEMA because we need their approval. And then town adoption of the final plan from all of you will hopefully be in August. And then as uh, Martin had noted, once you have this plan in place, you will be eligible um, for FEMA grants, which is great. So the big reason that we're here today is because we want to hear from all of you. Um, you know better than us what the hazards you're most concerned about are, what hazards have impacted all of you, um, what mitigation that you think the town should be considering as you all you know, live or work here uh, every day. So if you don't mind scanning this QR code um, to take the survey or visiting the website listed there, that would be lovely. Um, we also have this presentation, of course, on the Littleton MA website um, from the meeting today, so you can also get it there. Our next slide will have an email um, that you can reach Martin and I at if you have any other things you want to know or if you need that survey as well. Um, so can, I've got, got a question for you. Um, timing for the survey, how long um, would you like to leave that open? I think we're going to leave that open until like January, through the holiday, through the end of the year. Okay. Maybe, 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 maybe the next time the team meets. Yep. That way we'll have the input. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that third team meeting we're expecting to be in January. So let's say roughly mid January. Yeah, that, that's great. That gives us uh, time to post um, <laughs> this link um, yeah, or, or th this of slide on, on the front page right. of the website. So awesome. that would be helpful. Thank and you. Thank you. <clears throat> Board, have any questions or comments? Anybody? I would just like to um, say thank you and uh, in terms of outreach being able to, to get this out to as many folks as possible I think even represented here we have a lot of the town um, additional town committees um, whether it's uh, conservation or um, uh, LCT Health, uh, yeah exactly they're all relevant to this plan exactly one way or the other yep the more everyone can do, just pass this on to your own networks. You know, they'll be, they'll be, they can just pass an email along. Uh, it'll be on the website, but we like to maybe not make it passive, just wait, mm -hmm. waiting for people to come find it on the website that might like, you know, reach out to us. Yeah. Thank you. That'd be great. Can I ask, um, Maren, have we received any FEMA grants? Um, or have we applied for any FEMA grants? I'm. <laughs> There was funding available for a um, uh, for some roadway upgrades, some roadway drainage upgrades uh, a number of years ago that was pointed out um, through the, this process five, six years ago. I don't know the source of the fundings. I always thought it was FEMA grants, but I didn't know for sure. Actually, uh, the plan so, itself will have, um, we'll go back and find mm -hmm. any previous FEMA grants if there weren't. If that project was funded by some other source like highway money, you may not see that, but we have access to records of all the grants. So we'll check for that. This won't have any impact on Route 2 and 495 because the, um, I'm just thinking of the drainage and stuff out there, that's federal. It's federal and state, um, although a plan like this, it's fair game if there are problems with that drainage that the town can't do anything about because it's not town, but it affects 
the town in some way, it's fair game to put that in the plan. It's a way to maybe have a little bit of a bully pulpit. Hey, uh, Mass Dot or whoever it is, there's a, there's a problem here with range that's actually affecting our town or properties in our town. Occasionally that happens. We have towns in the inner core where are a lot of near a lot of the DCR parkways. Those are even more interspaced in, into the communities there than just a couple of big highways. So it does come up sometimes where the actual problem and the solution would actually have to be state action by a state agency and it's fair to put it in the plan to note it because it's a great opportunity to make this officially known on what eventually becomes a document that's approved by FEMA and FEMA and uh, yeah. Well why I say that is because 495 runs right up through the middle of Littleton and I do know that most of the drainage for 495 was dumped along the old farmland that, uh, that was there before 495 came in so if you're looking what, like where our schools are the drainage for that for that highway which the section of that goes right into where the schools are located sure. and there's the, str the streams and everything that yeah that's common the way the drainage is handled get it off the road the question becomes from a hazard mitigation point of view is actually causing a like a flooding problem uh, for this particular plan that's kind of what you would want to be looking right. for uh, so a school saying hey the drainage comes off and it affects our school or even if it's private property, if it's affecting somebody mm -hmm. in terms of flooding, then we'd want to know that, and I, I would recommend you put that in the plan, even though you're not going to be able to, as a town, solve the problem. Mm -hmm. um, the problem may never be solved, at least some stuff not pointing it out, right? So, so this can, is a good opportunity to point it out. It's, we can point the fingers at them. Yeah. Okay. Right, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up the schools, because school department is part of the, the um, town staff that's working on, on this. Anyone else? I, I want to pick up on, you know, the infrastructure you noted was the Mill Pond Dam. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not familiar with it. I'm familiar with Mill Pond, but who owns that? I think we own the dam. We own Mill Pond, don't we? The town, of the town, <coughs> the town owns the pond, but the, the, the dam, I believe, is part of the 495 infrastructure because they rerouted. They took part of Mill Pond and they mm -hmm. rerouted Beaver Brook. And they probably built the dam back then. So it? who checks it to make sure it's still? We, we can look that up. There's a dam data, data database and it has information like who the owner is. So we'll, we'll, that we'll, this is just a brief summary for PowerPoint. Sure. Yeah. We'll, there's probably more dams than this. We were given just examples. Um, the database will tell us who the owner is. Sometimes there are private dams that the owner, like it was a small Mill Pond by mm -hmm. 200 years ago and nobody knows who the owner is now, but usually it's a known fact that towns own some dams, private owners own some dams, there are some state-owned dams, some larger ones. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we'll check on any information we can get about the ownership uh, and also the dam inventory that we'll use for this in the plan itself where we're giving more details about dams. Uh, there's a scale of, um, of uh, like high and medium and low hazard to that dam. The DCR applies to it, so we'll be able to bring that information in. A lot of the smaller dams are really pretty low hazard, uh, but a few of them, depending on what's downstream of them, if they were to break, like what would be flooded, is kind of the, is kind of the issue. Yeah. Four ninety-five. Yeah. yeah. Or like it's a bigger backyard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have more place to, to kayak in, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I noticed too, this may be minor, but I noticed that in the list of medical facilities, you didn't have Emerson. There's um, many more. Things. Okay, there's all right. Like I wasn't sure sites. how. We just tried to give you a few. Okay, I, I wasn't but sure how. Good point, absolutely. Okay. I'm sure that's on there. I'll let you know. Really. Okay. Uh, basically, when the, when the full plan is out as a draft plan at our next meeting, people will see the, all those long lists and make sure if we're missing anything, there'll still be a draft, it'll still easily be changed at that point. Okay. But I'm pretty sure that there is definitely more than that one facility. Mm -hmm. We were kind of giving representative examples for, to keep it short for tonight. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we have a short time for uh, two, two quick things. There's, I believe there's a dam on Spectral Pond or something too, right? Because that had a problem with the culvert um, mm -hmm. about 10 years ago. Um, but I also had a question about the approval process. Does the town approve this as in town meeting or no, is it no. a planning board approve it? Or it actually first gets approved by FEMA, FEMA because the plan is satisfying the requirements of that federal act, the Disaster Mitigation Act that I pointed to. And it, there are specific requirements that FEMA has about what has to be in these plans. Uh, so they will approve it as to its content to make sure it meets all of those standards. And then when they say, okay, the plan's okay, meeting all the standards, 
it does come back to the town for, and not an exactly approval, they call it an adoption. They want the town to adopt the plan, which is by a simple vote of the select board or board of select. Uh, it doesn't have to go to town meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. It's Mr. McIver. Sure. Um, for the drainage of the Mill Pond, I know it's been an issue before, especially clogged up with the stream and backing up the Mill Pond. And even though I had no influence over I got a lot of calls from being in the Conservation Trust because people's septic systems were getting flooded out. And I eventually got Savas Danis from the Water Department, who also had no ownership background and may have some now, to actually get equipment to, to clear it out. So that's the issue. But also, remember correctly, Spectacle Pond had issues and it was a large washout. And also I'm concerned a little bit about Long Lake drainage where we own most of the land except for the wetlands draining it. So it I'm also interested in who would be in that local representative group. The uh, sustainability committee has been looking at various issues, doing a climate action plan, doing a sustainability plan, uh, and it would be nice if you had a representative from there being on that committee. Uh, well aware of a lot of the natural resources and wetlands that should be protected as well as some land uh, available. And also one of the things we've been pushing for is a sustainability coordinator or director uh, within the uh, planning department. So, you know, there are some concerns we've been trying to do but we haven't really gotten the traction. This may help. Sure, if you, uh, I'm sure if you want to be part of the working group, I don't think it would be a problem. Um, for their next meeting, if you want to coordinate with Marin to uh, sit in on it. Yeah, there's two more meetings still. In fact, yeah. the next two are kind of the more critical meetings because that's why we're actually going to be talking about mitigation recommendations, okay. uh, which is the key part of the plan. Mr. Sanders, way in the back. I see your hand. George Sanders, 672 Great Wood. I think we need to put on the plan the Beaver Brook. Bridge and Route 119 because when we get heavy rainstorms, it floods. And uh, the state is going to, they have approval to replace that bridge, but we don't know exactly when the state is going to replace it. But up until when they do replace it, I think it needs to be on the list because it floods out over there. Thank you. Good suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Is that a state on? Is that group 119? Yeah, yeah state. But again, what I said earlier, you put it on your plan. Mm -hmm. You may underscore the need for doing something with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Thank so, you so much for having me. Thank you. Yes, one quick. Um, so, name please for Mark. I'm sorry, Amy Charlo Lewis, and I'm on Omega Way here in Littleton. And so, I guess, um, it, you know, the um, just putting the sort of mitigation plan aside, um, what is the planning board doing to ensure that any developments that are going in, particularly um, over at the IBM facility, that we're you know putting in materials um, that are going to reduce our impact on climate change? Right, like we're having all these issues because of climate change. So, what is the planning board's role in? reducing our future impact um, and really pushing development and builders to be using you know, the best materials we can and the best practices that they can and just like holding them more accountable for our, like using solar or like, like really pushing them to like act responsibly. So yeah. I, I, I will take on part of that. Okay. Um, um, the when you're on site um, it's very <laughs> pleasing to me to be able to point out where the new um, structures are going that parking lot over there that parking lot over there and that parking lot over there will be no longer <laughs> the broad um, spaces of parking they're going to be new buildings with um, landscaping surrounding them with green spaces in so um, so there's that aspect to it, and then there's also the aspect that um, housing policy is climate policy. I can't imagine a more severe way of, uh, well, severe is not the right word, but a better way of addressing um, 
climate change then to um, allow housing options that don't require one acre of land and a big footprint to colonial house. So we have available um, uh, apartments, uh, small size units for, uh, or would be available in town, close to the town center, close to Route 495, and attached um, by shuttle to our commuter rail station. And also the the new by uh, the new uh, regulations for building the building code regulations all address the stretch the I don't know what the nose of the her or whatever that they're um, being more stringent as to what they can put in the buildings the energy efficiency of the buildings and how they're going to um, use uh, utilize the infrastructure of the building I mean a lot of buildings I don't know we like I said we haven't got into the actual design of the buildings yet but some of them are um, reusing gray water and um, different conservation measures there so those will all be addressed as they come before us for the actual buildings that are going on out there yeah and so um are those laws or things that people can choose to do well the the uh building are the laws they they, okay. they keep adding to the building the, the permitting structure of, of different things that they have to do to make the buildings more energy efficient those are laws they have to do that mm -hmm. so so speaking as an architect um I want to emphasize the codes, and they're continually changing. In January, there will be some communities. We have something called a stretch code. Now there's something called a super stretch code. Some communities, I'm doing something in Brookline, and they've outlawed any use of gas, any use of gas. And in this particular project I'm on, I asked the developer, what are you going to do? He says, I have no idea. What do you mean gas, like no, gas? No, no gas fireplaces, okay. no okay. gas appliances, okay. no gas heating, no, right. you know. And uh, so to some degree, there is, and then Mark mentioned hers ratings. So that those re relate to the weather tightness of buildings, and they're tested. And that's a, been a significant improvement in quality of buildings. But in addition to that, there are other considerations, and this is where it's extremely complex. There are many, many different um, programs of certification that, that look at different things. Uh, for instance, um, one of the things that they're choosing to do at IBM, which is now considered sustainable, is keeping the existing buildings, mm -hmm. rather than tearing buildings down, which have and what's called embodied carbon. Uh, they're keeping them and, you know, so there, there are all kinds of things. I think it's good to look for them, but I, I also think that in terms of a developer and its um, remit, they're going to go to code, um, which are much more substantial than they were even five years ago. But, we have a sustainability committee in town. They should, um, we should maybe try to, you know, have, you know when, we, when we're actually looking at site, and, and we're only doing site plan review. We're not, you know, we, we don't have the ability as a planning board to say you have to do this, this, this. Um, but we can certainly encourage uh, a meeting uh, you know, with the sustainability committee, we have someone on the sustainability committee here, um, and they can come up because there's a lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge. It's very diffuse, and it's sort of like the. I, I'm not sure there's there's a there's a consensus about one specific way to it to attack it. There are many ways, and uh, but you know. It's a worthy, you know, goal. So, are there bylaws that we can adopt that are like, go further than minimum? Well, goal? it's usually a matter of adopting versions of the state building code. So there are, and, and frankly, even though I'm in the profession, I'm not always aware, and you always have to check community by community what they've adopted. And uh, there's something now that's called a super stretch code. I, and I don't know how we adopt it in town. Do you? Are? They're adopted statewide. Well, no, but some, town, some towns right. adopt yeah. additional 
right. versions. Right. So if you have a stretch code, now there's something called a super stretch code. So that's something that maybe selectmen, I don't know how that works. Yeah. We have folks in MAPC, not my department, yeah. uh, who know more about that so we can do people in. Well, uh, yeah, that might be appropriate for this plan to, to touch on that ab about community yeah. efforts <coughs> because you are engaging climate change. Yeah. Yeah. So. Now, I guess maybe I'll tag on to what's just been said. The way you've just described how the regulations, in this case the state building code, has evolved and become more stringent and more, more sustainable. The same thing can be said for the regulations that govern stormwater, which is a big part of the whole flood issue that right. the main thing we're focusing on here. So every, I don't know if people are all familiar with what's called the MS4 permit, but uh, it's an EPA uh, permit on stormwater systems that this and all the other counties in the region have to comply with that was passed about five years ago, and it puts much more, uh, it puts a, a more sustainable framework on the way stormwater has to be managed. The emphasis is on taking stormwater that's generated on developed sites through pavement and buildings, and instead of just putting it into pipes, sending it away to the streams, infiltrating it and keeping right. that water working. Right. Uh, and so that, and then that gets embodied in local bylaws, the local stormwater bylaws. Which we have done. Which, which you have done, and that's an example of an evolution just in right. the last few years. That wasn't around. And, and it's now to the point where we have to engage consultants to interpret right. plans to whether they comply because mm -hmm. the simple person no, it's could. It's a lot of hydrology, yeah. that's right. And uh, right. they have to choose this benchmark and you know whatever. Right. And that's fine. Exactly. Yeah. BMP. Yeah. Precise. You've got but <laughs> it's, uh, you know, thank you for bringing it up, but it's um, it's not something that happens automatically. Well, there, there are things that happen automatically, but if you want to exceed um, uh, what happens automatically, which I will say, I've been doing buildings for 30 acres, they're so much better now. Yeah. They say, it's totally wrong to say they don't build them like they used to. Well, thank God. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's Legal better. Sense. It's better. <laughs> so, yeah. um, to, one more yeah. question, then we're going to move on. We'll have a, another bite at this apple sure. later. But yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Sarah Rambacher, I'm Hartwell Lab, and I'm also the chair of the Sustainability Committee. We would absolutely love to work with Planning Board, the Building Department, MAPC, all of you to uh, to move forward on uh, adopting these more stringent building codes and how we can do, find out how we can do that and what's appropriate. Um, we definitely, and we would also love to, to be involved in, in this process here that, that you spoke about tonight. Great, hey, thank you. Okay, thank you all. Thanks so much for having us. We're a little late, but it's part of the course with us. I didn't mention the hearings that are continued in case people Oh yeah, in case anybody's here for, um, what? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, the ones that we're not gonna hear tonight are um, the Taylor Street, the uh, Adult, the med sanctuary medicals, if, someone, if anyone's here for sanctuary, that's going to be continued to, to a later date. Um, the uh, storage, Newtown Road, is continued to a later date, if anyone's here for that one. And I think that's it. Everything else is, you know, we're on for. Okay. What happened to them? Um. <laughs> what are we scared him away already oh, is he no, coming in you know <laughs> ryan's going to bring him in in a little parade or something there you go um <laughs> <laughs> Mar martin needed some office space so oh. uh, cooper was letting him into the uh, other area of the oh, building okay. that you need to fob into oh okay so great be back cooper will be back do, shortly can we skip the introduction and move on to minutes then sounds like a plan look at that see that i can I'm, i can add a lib okay minutes from september 14th anybody have any questions or concerns no, I will obtain a motion to approve them as uh, presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bills. You got any bills? We do have bills. Right there. Oh, um, whole, whole list of them, including um, seven CPTC training courses that Cooper has agreed to <laughs> sign up for um, this, this fall. So I keep telling him we're going to fill his brain with all the good planning stuff. Do you want to introduce him now, now that he's back? <laughs> that, that was bad timing on my, on my yeah. part. I should have That's okay. It was be. Um, so 
very pleased to present our uh, assistant town planner, Co Cooper Matthews. Cooper comes to us um, from UNH um, with a degree in uh, planning and a minor in uh, green real estate, if I recall correctly, um, and a, a successful internship at uh, Lemonster uh, Planning and Development Department. Great. Excited Yay. to be here. We've <laughs> been waiting for an yes. town planner for a long time. Yes. yes. That's great. As you'll learn very quickly, uh, the, the uh, planning board is over overtaxed at this point, and uh, any help we can get would be greatly appreciated. Happy to help. And if you uh, have any questions or concerns, you can reach out to any or all of us. And, um, we'll try to bring you up to speed on as much as what's going on. Uh, obviously, Marin's a great resource for that. And she's been around the block once or twice, so she can kind of steer you, know, hopefully, in the right direction. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, but welcome. Thank you. When did you start? Monday? Monday. Do you live in close by? Wittenberg. Oh, not so not bad. Wittenberg. Okay. Cool. Great. I think you'll enjoy Littleton. I hope you'll enjoy Littleton. I think I will, too. Mm. Um, we have some interesting issues, you know, where we have two, two and 495 right in the middle of us. Um, so that's either a blessing or a curse, depending on where you look at it. And, and the train station. And the train is station. a blessing or a curse. <laughs> are you signing or are you? I have a question. Go ahead. So, um, so for sanctuary, the Green International, so I thought there was no peer review for Sanctuary, so they are still doing the stormwater. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. And the, um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I don't remember the last meeting. We kind of got, we were a little taken back, but I didn't think that you were doing a full <laughs> Review of Sanctuary. I thought we weren't going to, but Myron said she sent it all out and Green's doing the whole thing. That was last meeting we talked mm -hmm. about that. Anyway, okay. Um, bills, as the bills go around. Uh, article 18. Just like each one or no, just, just yeah. Firearms. Zoning bylaw update. Yep, so I was able to fill out the f Form 7. Um, that just outlines um, when the planning board had the hearing and the, the version of the bylaw that was voted on, sent that over to town clerk's office. I know she was working on packaging that up with the additional information that she needs from town meeting to send to the AG's office. Um, so if that's not already off um, uh, to the AG, it will be shortly. Okay, cool. Uh, next one. MBTA Community Zoning Bylaw. I asked you to put it on so we can speak about what, if any, next steps we're going to do um, and a few other updates to it. Um, you know, we need to continue the process. Uh, the state has told us that we have to um, rezone a, a, a parcel for um, 150 spaces within a half mile of the train station. So. Um, I asked Marin to get estimates from Emily about continuing with her, um, but we do need to um, start, well, not so much start all over, I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel, but we need to con start the process, continue the process, continue, right. so for a springtown meeting. Um, <clears throat> and how's the board want to go about it? Um, I, I want to share something I got from Senator Eldridge's office. Um, after last meeting, I inquired with both of our representatives about, you know, their, um, well, basically what, what was being put about by this process. And uh, it, a lot of politics speak, but it basically said, it has been communicated to us that there will not be any regulatory changes to the MBTA Communities Act. That's okay. what they're saying. So well, this, this is in this response to- This is what Senator to, Eldridge- Yeah, saying that people Well, I'll saying. read the whole thing. Senator Eldridge has been contacted by several Littleton municipal officials, myself and whoever else, about the MBTA Communities Act. After partnering 
with Representative Arciero to reach out to the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities. You're going to have to learn all these names. Um, HLC, Secretary Ed Augustus, to discuss the MBTA Communities Act. It has been communicated to us that there will not be any regulatory changes to the MBTA Communities Act, but that the, and this is the politics speak, but that the HLC Secretary and his staff are willing to sit down with any community to discuss the law, including Littleton. So, on the one hand, they're willing to discuss it. On the other hand, there will not be any regulatory changes. Uh, this is what I have informed any municipal official in my Senate district who has inquired about the MBTA Communities Act. Um, our CRO got back to my inquiry indirectly, but he pretty much said the same thing. So I just want to put that on the table. Mm -hmm. um, for whatever it's worth, you know, that's the situation. Okay. okay. Um, I, I um, have a letter that um, I wrote to ad address to Secretary Augustus asking for a meeting. Can we okay. can can we get into that in a minute? Let's okay, sure. Okay. So um, so that means we have to proceed forward. Um, after Well, I think we should definitely proceed we forward. So we and, and and proceeding forward may be reintroducing our last um, what we brought at the last what we time brought at the Maytown yeah. meeting. I would like to observe that I think there were several problems with the last town meeting, not the least of which is we were going over this very important issue after 11 o'clock. I don't think we should have done that. There were two issues that I think could have had a different outcome if uh, things had been scheduled differently or properly or bound over to the last state and the other issue is just in chat just in you know generic chats a lot of people weren't aware of this and a lot of people said oh my god I would have supported that and but they but if they you know if they have kids they can't be there at 11 o'clock at night and I don't want to be there at 11 o'clock at night so my feeling is we should definitely consider bringing it forward at the Maytown meeting again and maybe working a little harder for outreach um, town meetings are tough special town meetings are really tough mm -hmm. it may have been a mistake to bring it forward at the special town meeting because a hundred forty people out of a voting town of over three thousand uh, tanked this effort mm -hmm. okay well, I, like I said, I think it's our obligation to the town because of the ramifications if we don't do anything that we have to continue down this pathway. We have to show the governor's office that we are still working, trying to work with the governor's office to continue and come up to be in compliance. And, and that does not mean I wouldn't be open to other, uh, but I think other uh, strategies, but I think we should go forward with keeping the existing uh, Warren article. Well, we uh, need to start scheduling issue. scheduling the meetings uh, starting next month to continue the process so that we'll be prepared for springtime meetings. So we have to start putting it on the agenda starting in December. Everybody agree with that? I mean, May is only five. Yeah, five we really months. have three or four months. Yeah, so we have to continue with the process that we started. Whether it's the same parcel, we'll look at all the other parcels again, but we have to... Well. I think we also have to figure out where the money's going to come from and um, maybe we do it on our own maybe we don't use Emily I mean you know, it, I, I don't see how that's possible if we're if we're considering a different site oh well, yeah we have to have professional okay so um, we'll have to go to I the mean they, they're talking about algorithms and mm -hmm. you know this okay, and that. so we have to go to the select board and ask them for, for money for this okay which we should probably put that on the agenda to meet with the well, select board well or or the alternative is that we don't do anything well I don't I mean, well let's just put it out there I think you know we need to put it out there I mean the town said no and we did not have the full support of of the board we did not have the support of the assistant chair of this board I mean there were a lot of things that did not go mm -hmm. you know as we would normally assume they would go so you know do we want to go through this again we've spent five years on this five years okay and we know the town doesn't have the money I mean we heard that at town meeting yeah but I'm gonna 
go back to what something Mr. Sanders said at the town meeting. We have to do this. Where, from a from a financial standpoint, would be losing we, millions and millions of dollars. I know we all know that. Yeah, I know that. And and you know we heard that that we were threatening. I know the town. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, because we're pointing out consequences of choices, so mm -hmm. now we're threatening right. the town? I mean, you know. I hear you. I, I was. No, yeah. I know that. I'm not. I no, mean, I'm I know. just, I, you know, I'm throwing out a, a, an alternative here. The point is. I mean, I agree with you that I, you know, I would hate for the town to not be in compliance. But on the other hand, you know. I know, I know. Like I said after the meeting the other night, I was, I went up to the selectmen and said, you're on your own, good luck. That's not the correct approach to take. We're the planning board. This has got to come from us. We have to be thinking about what's best for the town of Littleton, and we need to move forward and on we this did. again. I know, but we need to continue. Maybe, maybe, they, maybe the people in, maybe the town would rather it just stay zoned industrial. Again, I'm playing devil's advocate here, okay? Yeah. You know that that's not my personal I get feeling. that, but all I'm trying to say is the process of moving forward has to, we have to continue moving forward. Real quick, because I'm not done with this shit. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, just a suggestion uh, of Ryan Farrar in terms of yeah, Mr. Uh, you mentioned about looking for some additional money. I mean, I, I think you know, you've been well served by Emily and her team so far. I think if you were to look for extra money, I think one of the things is would, would potentially be coming to the select board, but also then to the finance committee for potentially a reserve fund transfer to be able to do this because I think um, you know, keeping uh, the, the existing consultant you have, I, I think, would probably provide some the benefits. We can find a, a way to do that um, because if anything, um, you know, from, from the I mean, of course, the outcome was the outcome at town meeting, but um, clearly, you know, the, the state is, uh, is still supportive of wanting to see us put it zoning in, and then it, it would be the location is still to be determined, mm -hmm. but there's still work to do. Um, so, you know, it, it, I, so I, I think that again, you'd be greatly aided by uh, Emily and her team, and, and we can you know help support you to that end. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So. Are we in agreement that we should continue, start scheduling this? We'll yes. We'll you know, first we have two other <coughs> folks over here, too. I'm, I'm not done. I'm going to ask everybody. I'm just, I'm just talking about it. And the other thing is we need to, if we're going to continue with it, we need to go to the, uh, as, as Ryan said, we need to go to the selectmen and look for money to do it. So do you want to speak in, on this? Well, I would say that I agree that we do need to continue to move forward to try to make... Um, make this happen so that Littleton is compliant with the MBTA community's law in a way that is satisfactory, satisfactory to the residents that will vote affirmatively for it in May. So um, in terms of how to go about it, I actually think that this is coming from the fact that in the past I've heard you say that we are the ones that have a lot of the knowledge, if you will, to be able to do stuff, I actually think we can do a lot of it because we have so many of the pieces. If we just spend the time working through this, I think we can come up with it. And if we need certain aspects, um, that that's what we hire out for. But to, to do the whole thing in, in looking at that number that was recommended, that's a lot of money. So that would be my suggestion is that we we take a look at it maybe at the next meeting to to see well what what needs to be done what can we do and what needs to be farmed out so okay. to speak yeah i agree that we should continue um, working on this <clears throat> i also think that um we should explore what we can of alternative ways of going about this and if ed Augustus was willing to have a meeting with us. I think we should ask for one. Okay, so before we get yeah. into the letter, I know yep. that you've written a letter. <coughs> the planning board has reached out to the governor's office to ask them mm -hmm. about um, what's going on at 550 King Street, uh, about the con being considered as part of the mm -hmm. um, 750 units that, um, uh, that the MBTA community says we have to put forth. Um, we have been told that uh, we sh need to send a formal letter to the governor's office that they will consider that. So um, what I'm trying to say is we need to write a letter to the governor's okay. office asking, asking them if they will consider the rezoning that we did and the units that are being proposed at 550 King Street to 
okay. give us put us in compliance All with right. the community yeah. preservation. So if you want to, can I can I hand this out as a draft for that sure. kind of a letter? I think you need to give it to, to give it to Marin, and we'll have Marin send it off. To, well, I mean, you can. I, I, have, I have you copies. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. Sure. Should, but so, so, so I just want to make sure I understand this. So you're <coughs> suggesting that we go ahead, send a letter, ask if they will take all of King Street and apply that to all of. Correct. And then we wouldn't have to rezone anything near the train station. Well, I think we need to address that issue. We have to be on both tracks. We have to address that issue. We have to In case they don't. Correct. And we have to show good faith that we're still trying to do it. We're going to ask the governor to Littleton's a unique situation. To uh, we already have asked to ask the governor that, and the governor has agreed. The governor's office has agreed to take a look at a letter that we're going to send them to decide whether or not that is in fact uh, we have if it's a viable solution to it. Okay. Um, so what I'm saying is, we'll take this. We'll have. Marin Town Council will probably have Ryan involved with it to send a letter of an official response from the planning board to the governor's office asking them to consider the units that we have. That, that's all I'm asking for. So, and, and Barlett, I'm glad that you're speaking of um, not just 550 King but 410 Great Road. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I mean, think that's, that's, that's totally appropriate. Yeah. Um, and it, it sort of enhances our case. Now, this is a little extraneous, but we still have the issue of a vacant parcel next to our train station, which should not be single family houses. I don't think it should be, I don't think it should be cold storage giant warehouses. I think it should be multifamily houses. The last paragraph of this suggests an alternative that if we are granted some kind of a density variance, based on, on King Street and, and the mill, what would be appropriate would be um, lower density, you know, townhouse, duplex kind of, you know, roughly six units an acre instead of the... Right. Yeah. It's just a, it's a suggestion, but that's... Yeah. yeah. No, that's I mean, that would open yeah. up that possibility. Yeah. That we could support, and it's a... Why are you making faces? <clears throat> no, I think it's a good idea, Bartlett. No. I think it's a good... I think it's a good letter. I think no. it's certainly well worth... At least, yeah. I Maybe mean, we're certainly a, doing Littleton is certainly doing its part in in uh, building more units. What I don't like about King Street is that it's all for rent, mm -hmm. you know. And I think we need the, some for sale. Yeah, the, the, totally there was a, a senior round table where the, where there was a, a great demand for for own for yeah. condos. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's something that um, Lupoli listened to and heard, and you know that. They may be locked into rental at the at, at five fifty, but you know they may do something else at at, at the mill. I don't know, but they heard that message, so yeah. that's out there. But that's why I think we have to put both tracks yeah, because maybe we come back with something that's if the governor relaxes us, gives us gives us a, a break on the density, we can do more. We could put some for rent and for sale out there now, but maybe we can do all for sale out there if we get a get a break and the governor comes back and says, okay, you got 34 acres. You don't, we don't care if it's on 10 or 34 acres. Maybe they come back with that scenario. Who knows? At least we're exploring the different options. Okay. okay. I'm in agreement. Okay. What the letter does not say is if you look at the, a, a map of, you know, the station and the half mile around it, half of it is 495 and Route 2. So there's very limited area to start mm -hmm. with. Which is, you know, unlike probably most other train stations. Oh, so, certainly. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. And, and, I, and that's some of what the state took in, HLC took into account when they um, created the different. The the, 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 the one fifty instead of all. all yeah. Right. Right. So, the, um, <clears throat> I mean, I haven't read it this in detail. The only comment I would make is. I don't think you should. Uh, you know, you said this thing about the planning board and most speakers. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I take it back. I, I cannot emphasize more that I do not believe that town meeting was representative no. of, and, and that's the way it goes. I'm not, you know, I'm not 
saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying I don't think it was representative. Let, me, let me just say the governor's office was well aware of everything that the town of Littleton has done and trying to be in compliance. They were um, uh, disappointed that they didn't that we didn't get the vote we did the night before, but they are they are watching, um, and that's why they're willing to entertain an idea from us. Okay, and maybe something could come out of it. That would be great, and maybe we can do something else for that site. Mm -hmm. uh, presuming it's still available. Well, that's the thing, right? I mean, is, aren't they planning to come before us with a definitive site plan for like, industrial? They yeah. are. They have to so, finish their preliminary, and then they I believe they're planning on coming with the. You know, with the definitive for industrial, so maybe the ship sails, but who knows? But at least we we have to at least explore that option. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, Bart. Thank, yeah, thank you, Bart. Okay. Um, the Webster process. Okay. Okay. Um, Webster, Article Twenty Webster Parcel. Um, the uh, town has now re now received the Chapter Sixty One A notice uh, process that gives the town a right of first refusal. Um, statutorily, um, that decision goes um, to the select board. Just wanted to make the planning board aware that the notice had come in, has come in, and that starts the 120-day, I think, uh, process. So the question to the question that I have of it: do, Does the planning board want to weigh in on the proposal that's out there for this the, for the Webster parcel, whether it's viable or not? Um, I mean, we're looking at, and I guess I go back to what um, um, the chairman of the select board had to say. I don't think if the if it was six hundred fifty thousand like like CPC the CPC funds, and we had an estimate for that, I think everybody would have voted to buy it. The fact that it's one point six million dollars, we are the planning board. Should we entertain whether it's even a feasible plan, or do we stay away from it? That's what I'm asking the board. My feeling is that we should stay away from yeah, it. Yeah, I, I because I, first of all, one of the main issues on that site are wetlands, and that's not something that we're judging on. Now, it was conveyed to me that if there is a public benefit, they uh, the the various crossings that would be required for that driveway would be potentially considered. And what they this this was a you know, I don't. It wasn't exactly an imaginary proposal, but it was really preliminary, and so I, I think we need to stay away from it. Well, the, uh, let me play devil's advocate. So we have to decide whether the, that preliminary plan is viable. I mean, because let's face it, if it's not viable, then the the land is going to remain as open space. But how can we? We can look at some drawing, but but there's septic capacity. There's there's zoning. Let's start with zoning. Well, zoning it might be viable. How could it be? You need two way. If you're over 19 units, you need you need a second way in and out that's not proposed out there. You have to look at the, the how how is it going to cross all the wetlands there? You got a vernal pool. We'd have to get National Heritage involved to see what the viability of that vernal well, pool is. That's, that's that's why I don't right. think we should wait. Is that conservation? It's it's, yeah. it's oh, it's us. It's planning. Okay. But we need. We don't have the info. To me, this seems very preliminary. Well, yeah, but you're going to, so you're going to spend one point six million dollars on a preliminary plan that was written on a napkin. No, but why would we? We don't have a firm plan to look at. This was just like like you know. Yeah, there's on no a hearing there. I mean, if someone made a, a site, you know, a proposal, yeah, we would. But that's not. But there happening. is a proposal. No, there's a purchase it's not and a sale. proposal. It's not a. There's a purchase and that's sale. That's not basically. a proposal to the planning board. That's a justification right. for. Uh, it's an estimate. An appraisal. Okay. You know, that's all it is. Okay. And and actually, the Webster property, I think, should do the same thing. Is consider coming back before the town at the normal town meeting and see it was a very close vote and there are very many people in town who have a priority for saving land mm -hmm. and uh, I heard a lot uh, when we were doing the open space recreational public meetings and I think these people need a chance to um, you know have another bite at I, mean, may, I you know I don't know what the Websters will do um, the other thing is that uh, the Littleton Conservation Trust has already, in, you know, started a, um, you know, a fundraising. Uh, someone in town who has seen this all said, you know, the Websters should do two things: they should bring it back to town meeting, and uh, whoever 
is supporting it should try to raise money. And they said that that was, when the library did that, that changed their attitude. You know, crusty old New England person, well, if people are actually coming out of their pocket to, you know, support okay. this, it made me think more about supporting it. And, the, and both those, you know, so one of those things is happening. Encourage all of you to donate because they'll match up to fifty thousand dollars by the Wait, end of the year. But I thought in the conservation. This is the Littleton Conservation right, Trust. Right, but can they put money towards? I thought you couldn't put any money towards. No, piece that's of not. That's a that's a separate. Yeah, separate. Charitable okay, account. okay. It's yeah, only yeah, the yeah. Community Preservation Committee. Yeah, right. The CPC, right. we would support it, but you, the state law says you right, cannot right, use CPC right, funds right, right, if it's over right. the if, it, if it's over this. Uh, right. You know, right. so. So, okay. um, All right. uh, but I, I don't think, I mean, you can have an opinion about it. No, I, I didn't want to weigh in the last time when yeah. Myron wanted to put it on before Tom Eric said, nope. I'm just asking if you guys want to weigh in on it. I, I, I think that was another mistake in town meeting when that diagram went on. And people can disagree with me, but I thought it was a red herring. I don't think, you know, because they're, oh, well, they're doing this, I don't like that, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it, and, and it wasn't a real thing. You know, it wasn't a plan. It was just a diagram. And um, so anyway. Okay. All right. Let's ask if anyone else has comments. I Anybody else have any comment on it? Or we just leave it alone and let the selectmen deal with it? I, I don't think that it, we have jurisdiction on that right now. Okay. Mr. MacGyver, real quick. Sure, uh, very, very quick. And I'm not representing a conservation trust, actually, I'm just a trustee. It's a different president there. Uh, Gary Wilson had mentioned it's too bad this isn't a ballot box, a uh, petition ballot box question where the whole town could weigh in. Um, and that's possibly going back to annual town meetings possible. But there's a quote performance date, a date of execution in March, end of March. So, how do you expect? Something to be presented at town meeting if they have to execute it at the end of March. Then so you're assuming that extension. it will be executed. And I know the Websters are paying interest on a loan they have, hoping to to protect it for the best of reasons. Um, and the, the other final thing is, if there's a purchase and sales agreement, and it's verifiable and it's valid, I mean, that does show a worth, despite what the fair market value was on the single appraisal. So, yeah, I mean, there, it'd be nice to have the town to weigh in on it. And the only thing I can think of is a parallel for five years, we did not participate in CPC when there's 100% matching because the selectmen were afraid they'll look like more taxes. And actually, it was the Conservation Trust, myself and some other people went with a petition and got on a ballot and voted for it. And we passed up five years, 100% match. So I think reaching out to the public is good. I don't see how you can have us at town meeting if the date of execution is the end of March, from my read from it, the town. And that may be, but. So I mean, I like mean obviously can ask for an extension. You know? I mean, well, there's a lot of skepticism about whether that's a real proposal. Or a real proposal. Sure, I, I realize all that, and yeah, I share. Yeah, I, I sit back and listen, and I, I have some of the same questions too. But um, I mean, it's not the planning board's font role to facilitate a land, you know, a private land transaction. Or, yeah, you know. sure. But yeah, it's fragmented town government. Yeah, you say, ah, oh, there's wetlands. Well, you're just hearing about climate action, about protecting natural resources, and so on for. Yeah, and wetlands do help the flood control. Okay. So yeah, it 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 probably is good to extend over to other boards. And well, and I um, I have to get this off my chest. I somewhat, you know, we talk about other boards. We talk about the finance board, which is not elected, and is seemingly determining town priorities, mm -hmm. and that's part of what they do, but. There doesn't seem to be, you know, I don't think it worked well in this case no. because I think many people in town have a priority to protect that land, mm -hmm. and um, it didn't come about. Okay. Yeah. All right. It, it, it just if 
it could get extended to town meeting. Gives people to do some fundraising with foundations. You know, the Conservation Trust has put together 10,000 doing more. It's going to take, and they've never done this before, it's going to take a bit to get to 1.4 million. So, but if you bring in foundations, you do need some time to right. to make it work. I mean, I think, well, Mark Brownbucker's in the audience and he spearheaded raising a million dollars for the library. It wasn't the entire amount of the library, it was amount to get the community invested and, you know, in, in, in a significant way. So that's a possibility. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, like well, I said, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, moving right along, um, member up in the put an update on project. Before we get to that, Ms. Carr, you're here. Sanctuary has continued, you know. I know. Just here to find out what date it's continued to because I know you hadn't set your January meeting schedule yet. So they just asked me to come as a. Oh, you want to sit there and wait? Cover. You're going to wait? Okay. We'll, we'll do it at the end. Well, okay. No, it's, it's on the agenda at 7 o'clock. Well, <laughs> no, it was uh, just in case that <coughs> the attorney put in for a specific date and in the event that the board wasn't okay. meeting that night, I'm authorized to. Agree to okay, I just want to let you know you're okay. Yep, and we do those two things at the end. Which two things? E and F. <coughs> e and F at the end? Yeah. Sure, all right. Yeah, we can do that. We can uh, move along. We'll go to 645 stormwater permit review, Taylor Street, and the water main extension. And, and then actually, I would point out that it is already after 7, so you could technically continue the. Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's see what some we can get Ms. Carter out of here. Okay, Thank we have a 7 o'clock uh, continued public hearing, 234 Taylor Street. We, we want to put it on till in January. We want to skip December. Okay. Yeah, so the request was for January 4th, which is the first Thursday in, in January. Um, then I realized that the board had not discussed your January and February, well, your next year's meeting schedule. Mm -hmm. so on occasion, you'll skip the first. But, uh, First Thursday, but uh, I didn't. I'll ask Elise if, if anyone's going. She's still <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I, I know. I did look at. No, I'm fine on the fourth or the eleventh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The um, I'm not good for the fourth. Let me see. Twenty nine, thirty, first, second, third, fourth. Uh, that's a Thursday. I don't get back to Friday. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Uh -huh. See, there was a reason why I needed to come. <laughs> so the 11th? Can we do the 11th? I'm fine with the 11th. Mm -hmm. Everybody else good? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I know I'm away. I already have a trip planned. All right. So Should we we'll do, do February while we're on this? Okay. So what time? Do you want to give a time? Um, yes. Do you want to start with this? Yes. Let's put it on for first. Okay. Um, so six. Start at six. Do this one at six fifteen. See, it paid off soon. Yeah. Hey, I'm not complaining. Okay, <laughs> six fifteen, six thirty, somewhere around there. <laughs> well, whatever. You think we're gonna be done in fifteen minutes? No. No, that's why I put it on to six thirty then. Perfect. Ready? So, um, continue to Thursday, January eleventh, twenty twenty four, at six thirty p.m. That's okay. what I heard you guys do. Yeah. February. I have meetings for February. What's the dates? February first is. The first Thursday. Do you want to do February first? I need to because I have a work commitment on the eighth. Okay. okay. I'm leaving on the third. <laughs> hey, I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So let's say February first. Perfect. Okay. Everybody good with that? Yep. Cool. Okay. Is there any way we can move it to the fifteenth? Or that really screw things up? Yeah, that's a couple of weeks. Yeah. All right. Keep it on the first. That's all right. right. Okay, back to 645. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Sanders, we're going to input. We're going to do that after later. We're running late. We're going to put it on at, at the end, okay? That ain't good. Oh. Sorry, I but we're running late. Put the input at the end. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to put in the plans. Or? No, I have the plans. So really we have, you know. Okay. Don't worry, you get to speak. Yeah. Uh, Isn't it? Did you take a formal vote for continuation to that date and time? Sorry. Oh, I think we just did it. Okay. Thank Don't you. Worry. you got to take a formal vote. All right. I'll, m I'll make a motion that we continue Thank sanctuary you. till. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> when did I say it was? January 11th. January 11th at 6:30. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 You're happy now? Yes, I am. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Okay, one more time with the sheet number. Uh, C100, please. Thank you. There you go. Let's skip right over it. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Aaron uh, Guatzaloka, I'm from Weston and Sampson. Uh, I'm here tonight on behalf of the Littleton Water Department to uh, talk about the Taylor Street Well project. Um, <clears throat> now the, the well location, uh, that we're, uh, the well site location where we're applying for this permit, the stormwater permit, it's part of a larger project. Uh, it's a collaboration with uh, the Water Department, uh, the Town of Boxborough, Mass dot and uh, DEP. So um, this project, uh, the project, the overall project, uh, it's going to provide some redundancy to the town's water supply. Uh, the new proposed water supply well will connect to the, the new PFAS treatment facility, mm -hmm. and there's going to be a new main extended down to the town of Boxborough to uh, provide service, extend service to clients in Boxborough. So, for so this is the well site that was donated to the town from the Amazon. Development. Yes. Yep. Yeah, it's this located behind at 153 Taylor Street, behind the the Amazon warehouse and the parking lot. This is the 54 acres parcel that was donated. Okay, just so that everybody knows. Great, thank you. <coughs> You're welcome. Uh, so this uh, work at the well site will basically entail construction of an access road, uh, which will be built uh, from the Amazon parking lot. Uh, into the wooded area behind the parking lot and down to the well site. It's uh, going to be approximately 1,200 feet long. Uh, 800 feet of that will be gravel uh, with a 400 foot uh, portion uh, near the well being asphalt. Um, additional uh, work will include uh, stormwater facilities and uh, utilities to service a new well building. It's going to be installed. Do you say it's going to? Be a big building, a little building? Uh, it's going to be a little building. I, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't have the dimensions on the, off the top of my head, so I apologize. This is the wellhead there, right? There's it, it's approximately, yes, yeah. yes, exactly. I, I want to say it might be approximately 350, maybe 400 square feet tops. Okay. The footprint of the building? 20 by 20. So okay. it sounds like maybe the size of the, uh, um, the one behind the VFW? No, that's much bigger. No, that's okay. bigger. Twenty by twenty, it's like the size it's of two, two, it's a two sheds. Car yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the it's one small two car garage. The big yeah. one behind BFW does the PFAS and everything else. That yeah. one's huge. Yeah. It's huge. Right. The small little Just wanted to get a sense. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, when are you when are you proposing to start this? You gonna rip up every town and every road in Littleton while you're doing this? Uh, <laughs> Well, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how the phasing is going to go, but um, I believe the plans are to uh, start construction by uh, summer of 2024. Okay. Um, let me see if I have that right. That's, That's next year. Yeah. Okay. So I'm how sorry, does, I don't have... How does the water main from the well connect to... The rest of the water infrastructure. I mean, well, does it go through the right Amazon on parking lot? I believe yes. It's going to run up uh, past the Amazon parking lot, uh, okay. down Route Two, okay, uh, beneath Beaver Brook, and then up, I believe, Whitcomb Ave, mm -hmm. to the PFAS to the new building. PFAS yeah. Yeah. facility. Mm -hmm. And okay. then it's going to go the other way towards Boxborough. This is the water the well. Yes, that's it's going to run about five miles. That's main, kind of down to Boxborough. Boxborough too. But that's that's treated water, not raw water. That's treated water. The raw water, will, yeah. So the raw water goes to the PFAS. The raw water goes to the PFAS, and then, and then the five miles of main is going to be treated to Boxborough. Yes. But my understanding is that, that those wells don't have any PFAS. You're, you're bringing it to treat it anyway, because all the Littleton water is treated. But yes. Yeah. PFAS is everywhere. I know, but I don't think that well has it. Yeah. Well, when it was Isn't tested, it just Spec Pond that has <coughs> PFAS? Uh, I'm sorry. He doesn't know, I don't know that. Yeah. Yes. That's another consultant. Okay. No. From what I've been told is that it's that one doesn't have yeah. consent. It's the spec pond mills that have yeah. it. Anyway, okay. Do I have any questions or concerns? Are you going to run underground electric service down the road to the, to the well? Yes, we are. Um, I believe it's going to come from 
uh, somewhere on the Amazon property where uh, they're going to tie tie into the electrical uh, into conduit one of there. Their circuits. Hmm? Tap into one of their circuits. Yeah, and run it down. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Run, run yeah, not quite, but cord. the electrical <laughs> infrastructure that's there. Yeah. Well, the way they have it now is you have to take a bit of a guide rail out to get out to this thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's not going to be readily accessible, so I'm so assuming it's going to be some sort of underground there. It's still open space. That's That hasn't changed. Yes. But, yeah. So it's just the infrastructure of, of putting in the pipes to get it to the, uh, to the uh, treatment plant. Who's going to be the contractor on this one? I don't, it has not <coughs> gone out to bid yet. It's uh, still under uh, it's under review by DEP right now. Okay. And uh, you know, so we haven't made it through permitting yet. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or concerns? No, I don't think so. No? I mean, it's a small building. You'll have a place for a truck to turn around and go back out. And yeah, we're going to need to provide more. access for a uh, a drilling rig to be able to get down yeah. there. So yeah, we'll have a hammerhead turnout. Um, okay. Yeah, it's all been designed out and taken into consideration. Actually, they've worked on a deal with, I believe, Amazon right now so that they can get out there. They did the testing out there and everything else. I'm assuming that that's probably going to stay in place yeah. for that. Okay. They're minimizing the footprint <coughs> out there because it's... That's what I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> Make it small. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, there was some discussion at the beginning of the a little while ago in the design process whether or not um, they would need the stormwater permit um, from the planning board and it just it triggered it by not not too much but they and that's why they're in front of you for this do we have a decision i'm just going to mention this don't be mad at me we don't need to do peer review on this um <clears throat> it's your choice whether you do or not um the we have an estimate from green for a stormwater peer review um I wanted to get the estimate and find out what it was. It's 3,400, somewhere in there. Um, but if if the stormwater system here, for whatever reason, were, were to fail, what are the consequences? The water's not going towards any buildings or structures. It's going into Beaver Brook. And so is the... <coughs> <coughs> I was having a, t a tough time struggling whether or not I should recommend that you go with the peer review or not. Um, we have the estimate. Um, uh, Conservation Commission is um, has started to look at this. Um, they look at it next on um, December 5th at, at that meeting. They have the uh, capacity to um, ask for a stormwater review um, for any uh, wetlands impacts. So. I'm thinking about it from the perspective that for the other projects that have come through, if it's required to have a stormwater review, then we've had a peer review on it. So, so I, I brought it up, <coughs> but the it was acknowledged <coughs> that it's just barely meeting that. Well, I I don't know. I I, I don't really have a opinion. Right. And <laughs> and what the design what the design review does the process is it goes through <laughs> this engineer's design. You know, I mean, this engineer reviews this engineer's design to to determine if, if they think it's adequate and look ask for changes. Um, in this case, you've got the water department overseeing this engineer's design of it. Does the town, in this case, have enough at risk that you think it's worth asking for you know $4,000 to be added to this project cost to, to go through that, for the planning board to go through that review? Um, and Maybe we could use that money for the MBTA. Yeah. Uh, it's the project that <laughs> they I know. I know. For I know. I'm, I'm um, being facetious. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. We refer back to the water department all the time when we're doing anything else. You know, they're the experts. The peer review is just going to mimic usually what the water department says. So do we need somebody else to agree with the water department? Or maybe we can get a... Well, here's a question. Did we do a peer review for the Whitcomb site? For the Whitcomb site, that was prior to the stormwater um, permit process. Okay. Yeah. So, 
I don't I don't care one way or the other. I mean, I, I, I trust the water department. I think the water department is going to do what's in the best interest of the town of Littleton. Do we want to have one more agency to oversee it? I, I don't think they're overseeing it. They're just looking over the shoulder. <coughs> um, I, I, I'm torn on this, too. I mean, you know, Anna's point about or let's just be consistent. You know, let's... I will yeah. spend thirty four hundred dollars. Well, they're spending thirty four. They have to spend thirty four. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna have a bake sale to get the money. No, I think they're good. And Do you have Lauren's already done the work of getting a proposal. Okay, is that okay? They don't. Yes, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you decide. Okay. Everybody good with sending it off to peer review? Violet. Um. I mean, if that's what the board wants to do, I'll go along with it, but I don't think it's necessary. Okay. To Lisa? I don't think it's necessary, but I'm kind of with Bartlett. I'll go with whatever what the majority I've vote is. So, mm -hmm. three people. So you're the tiebreaker. I'm the tiebreaker? Yes, you are. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No, because four of us. I haven't weighed in yet. Okay, well, you can weigh in, but I don't think you're the tiebreaker. I am, three okay. to two. No. You're in f No, I, I don't, I, no. you know, I, I'm yeah. kind of. Yeah. I don't care. I, you know what, to keep it consistent, let's have peer review. But let's have them, maybe they could tone it down a little bit. We don't need 37 <laughs> pages of peer review. How about two? Two compromise, two, a two page peer review. <coughs> let's just do it. Just okay, mm -hmm. send it out. Okay, yep, we'll do. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So then. When do you want to schedule it? Do you want to. I, I would suggest we do add, add this to the December uh, 14th meeting um, on, oh, yeah, on the outside chance that the peer review comments are back and you've okay. had a chance to reply to them already. And, okay. the, and the backup is the January. All right. Yeah. We'll put it on December 14th. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, continue 7 o'clock, 705 King Street, definitive subdivision, endorse the mylaws and endorse the covenant. Um, what? Do the public, we don't mind. Public comments? Public comment. You want to do it now? Come on. Okay. Okay. Kids are in bed, like I would say. Oh, no, <laughs> that's good. I know George wants to get home early. Okay. Because everything else has been continued. Okay, we'll do public Public input, we'll go back to E. Northern, well, let's do uh, member updates first. Northern Bank, uh, Hager, Hager's moved right along. They've got the siding up. They're getting ready to put the windows in. I, I had a question about that. Did, in your meeting with the uh, seniors who are interested in housing, were any of them interested in Hager? Because that's for sale. No, it was, it was, that, that, that didn't come up. It didn't come up at all. Okay. I mean, that's an example of... It is. No, it's for sale. For, for the Hager Home Center for sale units. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, that, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That development didn't come up per se, but um, ownership units I were, think there's only one left. So. Mm. That's good. Ownership was a big thing. I want to see mm -hmm. ownership. Okay. Um, Northern Bank, there... Mm -hmm. uh, no. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say... What? I saw a crane. They were... <laughs> Yeah, much neighbor. They were comment. taking trees down. They were uh, trees from the bank property fell onto one of my neighbors. Giant trees, mm -hmm. and they were removing them. Ah, okay. But yeah. after a lot of fiddling around, they yes. didn't immediately uh, volunteer to remove them. The project for the bank is still out the bid. I don't think they've awarded okay. it yet, but that, that's <laughs> what I heard. Anything on the bicycle and pedestrian plan? Um, yep. Uh, one sm sh small thing on here, your homestead, um, they're going through the um, financial analysis for the sale of the two uh, lottery units, the 60% and the 80% AMI. They're really struggling with the low price points because uh, the price points are based on uh, the current uh, mortgage rates. So they may have be in the position of having to wait till uh, next spring's um, Hopefully Up, the update in, in the HUD numbers um, okay. comes through. Um, and then bicycle and pedestrian plan, um, planning board adopted already, and just uh, this week, earlier this week, uh, BPAC um, approved it as well. I let MAPC know and let the select board know that that's been a approved. comment about the transportation advisory committee. Um, one of the things that came up about the train station site is that 
we had always, we had a lot of people had talked about developing a bike pedestrian mm -hmm. path along the back. And, you know, I guess my attitude is let's just, as the planning board, keep it in mind, whatever proposal we get, you know, let's keep that door open. Mm -hmm. You made me forget something else. Getting back to the MBTA communities, mm -hmm. discussion with the governor's office, one of the criteria to be considered for that is that there's going to be a dedicated shuttle service from 550 King Street to the train station. That's one of the reasons they're going to consider right. the units there, so that that has to be part of it. So we have to probably, in Bartlett's letter, make sure we put that in there. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't that. have that now. We're going, it's going to have to be. It's part of the conditions that they would consider it. As well, well I know, but who pays for that? The poly company. Yeah, okay. it says here it's committed to provide. Okay. Yep. Yep. So they'll... Because the MART grant is not necessarily for fixed route. This would be a fixed schedule route from, yeah. from there. In order for it to be even considered, they one of the conditions they told us was that it had that has to be. I would love that because then I could literally get from New York Manhattan to my house without public transportation. Okay. Anyone else? Otherwise, I'll open Mr. Um, C yes, please. Okay. Thank you. So, um, Mara and I had a conversation with um, a resident, um, Justin McCarthy, um, in reference to um, the inclusionary bylaw um, for ANRs, which is one for six plus lots and so it was a, an interesting conversation um, very helpful I think to be able to see both sides of what's needed from an affordability standpoint what's needed from a development and banking standpoint and um, he did ask um, you know if the planning board at some point in the future would be open to considering a zoning change to allow for um, more density on those smaller lots instead of you know just single family homes and the, the purpose in that is, and correct me if I'm wrong, Maren, is um, that if there's six homes that are going to be built and one of them has to be affordable, that's a big chunk for them as as a developer. Um, and But if there's more density allowed on a smaller lot, then perhaps it makes it more palatable. Is that correct? Um, yeah, that was my understanding of his ask. Um, the, one one method to do that is um, consider updating the open space development bylaw. Right now, you're allowed uh, still single family homes, but on um, smaller lots while you're setting aside uh, other parcels. Um, uh, Justin was asking to consider uh, different um, housing typologies, you know, on on uh, for each um, for the cluster development. Mm -hmm. um, you know, have townhouse units for example and it's something other than single families yeah so that would that was the but our subdivision rules and regulations call for single family and one I, I, right. so we'd have to change right it would well, be and sig it also significant is, zoning is related to, to septic yeah. mm -hmm. you know yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. again just sharing the information that that meeting was held not advocating for anything yeah. just sharing gotcha. it out um then the senior housing roundtable um was on Tuesday. Um, thank you very much to um, Ritza Crossan from Chapa who was there and to Rick Freiberg who was there on behalf of Lupoli Companies. I think we had a lot of really good feedback from folks. Um, the two top things that came up were that folks wanted um, condominiums um, and then also a continuum of care opportunities for um, the independent living um, Assisted living and then nursing. nursing. Yeah. Age in place. Age in place, yes, exactly. So something else for us to to know that there's a desire for that. Um, and then the last update I have is the Affordable Housing Trust met on Tuesday evening where we reviewed members' strategies um, because we're working on an action plan. It's a five-year action plan, and those are all going to be getting um, – draft it up and then we'll hopefully finalize that plan in December and based off those um, particular plans for the next five years incorporate use of the dollars that are currently there so that um, next time we get asked by FinCom, <coughs> CPC, etc. we should be able to um, answer what the money is going to be used for. So that's my updates. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, public input. Mr. Sanders.
George Sanders, 672 Great Road. Mr. Chairman, I want to uh, speak on the MBTA Community Zone Bylaw. Uh, after hearing certain information here tonight, uh, I'm sort of kind of glad that it didn't pass because I think there are some things that uh, is not intact. Uh, with regards to what was made known, like this 600 unit was going to be at the 550 King Street there. Did anybody ask Sal about now? I hear 410 now being a possibility of, of the property there and the 550. Do you have anything from Sal saying that he's willing to accept and let? the town utilized this in accordance with the MBTA saying 600 units over there and 150 at at the track. Yes. Where's the documentation that you have on that? It, it's, a, it's a zoning issue. It's not a, it's not, I mean, we've already zoned it. It's already zoned. The, the, the South property, doesn't have anything the, the, to do with I that. I understand the housing over there, but you can't just arbitrate, just go and take somebody housing and said I'm going to use this against that well we went no to the special I'll answer it okay we went to the state with the with the support of mr. Lapoli and asked the question and the governor said that they would entertain the answer okay so mr. Lapoli is well aware and mr. Freiberg is here can speak to it as well that we're going to try to add the 150 units the count of the 150 units from the 700 and something units that we have already approved there Okay, that's what we're talking about. That's all we're talking a about. Adding that to the 600? 600 is already Mr. Lapoli's property. Yeah, already I know, but his. You, you're talking about transferring the all 150 from over there to over there. Over there. So all 750 units would be done through at the Lapoli's at the 550 King Street. Well, the other thing that I had uh, concern. I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not saying that that's, they're just willing to entertain that idea. Well, I, I, I understand that, but my concern was that uh, whether or not Sal had uh, agreed to that because if you send a letter now to the governor and ask the governor to entertain that, I would say, do we have this agreement already in hand with this particular developer or whatever the case may be? That was, that was my concern about this because in the bylaw, the bylaw was like saying that this was already a done deal. We have this there, and we're only dealing with the 150. The other thing I think that the presentation in presenting this to uh, the people at the town meeting, I think that the planning board could absolutely do a better job in making the people aware of what you're talking about you want them to vote on. So I would suggest that uh, you let the town planner, probably along with the consultant, do some time on LCTV and explain to the people exactly what is going down and what needs to be done here and why it's so critical for the people to understand that Milton has a lot to lose here if you don't come through. And we have to set aside what our personal preference are and look at what's good for Lilton. What is the benefit for Lilton? And I think that uh, we can do a better job in doing that because I think that we did not give the people the opportunity and, and I'll say this to you Mr. Chairman that uh, when you got up there you implied that somebody was going to give us more information but you seem to left one minute of the time left and we did not hear from the planner which I think she does a very good job in presenting an article to the town where the people understand it. she got the answers and so forth and when the consultant got up there I guess she had 45 seconds left to get up there to speak but we didn't even hear from the town planner based on all the information you presented up there and that to me was not what I had expected that was going to be coming from the planning board with regards to this MBTA because we knew that 
It was a critical item and we needed to get through to the people and I don't think we got through to the people. That's why it failed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have um, anything left other than endorsing the King Street Divinity Subdivision? Um, yeah, technically you have the continuation oh, yeah. request for um, the 715 to 550 Newtown Road. Yep. Um, they uh, did circle back with me and let, let me know they're not ready yet. Um, they would like to continue. What about 160 Air Road? Um, oh. Yeah, but I was looking at the time. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that's going to be the last thing we discuss. Um, when do you want to put it on for? Do they want December or do they want January? Um, they didn't specify. So, um, I think we should do January. I think that's I think so a too. good idea. I think we should maybe even do February. <coughs> they, um, their letter indicated that they had significant design changes based on. Yeah, the they, they had a lot of work to do. Yeah, okay. a lot of work to do. Let's put it on for January. Okay. So continue to Thursday, January 11th at 7? 7, perfect. So I would move that we continue 550 Newtown Road to January 11th at 7 p.m. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Do you want to do the 710 and do the, five, the 705 after since it's um, endorsements basically housekeeping stuff let's um let's discuss uh maybe they want to leave that's why i want to oh yeah yeah okay yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah right your, your wife and kids okay, don't no, care all right let's do all right we'll, we'll do the go ahead Good evening, Rick Bradberg from TEC. So um, officially we're here just for the endorsement of the plans and the covenant. Um, but uh, while we're here, we thought we'd give a project update also, if that's okay. Yes. Um, yes. So we're uh, working in the background on updated plans that depict that, um, that retail corridor, that pedestrian environment that we showed you a photo of last time we were here. Um, through that process, uh, one thing that we started talking about is possibly the incorporation of a hotel on the plan. It's the first time that we've talked with you about a hotel on the plan, and that's why I wanted to kind of bring it up in an informal discussion. Uh, the last thing I want to do is surprise you with a submittal that includes something that we've never dis discussed before. Um, we had informal discussions before we presented our original special permits that you kind of had an idea it was coming, and so I thought it was fair to do it again. Um, oh, thank you, Martin. Um, technology, it's back. <laughs> um, so uh, th this is the rendering of that pedestrian corridor. The uh, plans that we're working on for the master plan amendments are going to are going to reflect this this version of the plan, which I think you guys will really enjoy. Um, at the end of this is where we're thinking about possibly including a hotel. The hotel would have event space in it, um, so that would be capable of hosting both corporate functions, but also things like weddings. Um, we think it'd be helpful to activate the green space a little more as well, like things like what you know, picture of wedding photos and things like that occurring um, out on the green, just to kind of add to the vibrancy of the area, but. If you guys were like, hey, this, this is not an official vote, we'll supply the plans um, that show it, but we just want to see if that was a non-starter before we ever put pen to paper about it. Wait, which end? The end at It'll be on the, the common or the end at Yangtze? Uh, the end up by the common, the okay. west end, yeah. And how big are you? Um, I think the discussion is, we're figuring that out, but between 100, 150 rooms, so like a standard size hotel. It would be of the variety of like, uh, I'm not supposed to mention brands, um, <laughs> I'll just say, it's just between us. <laughs> like a Marriott autograph collection kind of. Uh, sort of like the Marriott that's down at the point? Well, the autograph. Yeah, high, end, high, high end. That's more yeah. boutique -y The well. autographs, they try to develop different identities for each yeah. property. So, so, so it's a little more sign. It's a little yeah. more unique. No, but is it the same size-wise? Size-wise, it's. Pr I'm not sure. I'm not sure how big that hotel is, to be honest with you. Um, but it would be it would be a higher end, um, more site specific, branded to the environment, not necessarily like the big flagship type, you know, signs things like that. What would what would you have to give up though? Because that's going to take up space. Would you have to give up retail or? Um, well, actually, we I think we've done a better job of consolidating the parking um, beneath the um, residential buildings out back, um, and the footprint of the hotel I don't think is that large um, because hotel rooms are pretty small, um, fortunately. Um, so, so it's really more of a consolidation of the space in the rear of the site, um, you know, and then uh, and then taking advantage of that space to create this sort of lot, you know, near the uh, near the green. 
Um, but it's, you know, if it was like a non-starter, I'll say we're not going to put that on the plan. Um, but we just thought we'd get like, you know, sort of a sense of the board and opinion of the board about the particular use because that was not included on our original special permit uh, documents. Is that inside the, uh, the form-based code part of the lot of the site? It is going to be right on the line. I have to look at that. I have to look at that to be, uh, I have to look at that Bartlett. It's going to be right on the line. It's like, it's going to be like at the back of the green. Okay. So it's going to be very close, either in or right on the line, I would guess. I'll There's still that. plans to put in uh, another hotel at the point. I don't think so because of the septic. They've been looking at it for years. Yeah, but I, I don't didn't think know they, if they, I don't heard. think they can because of the, but they don't have the septic capacity. Right. Yeah, so no, no plans to increase but the seemingly the there's demand i mean mm. that apparently that marriott is packed yeah booked full that's what we've heard too yeah, yeah. are you um gonna when you if you're gonna come forward with this are you gonna talk to us about what you're gonna do with uh, um, the chinese restaurant are you looking to increase the um uh, retail configuration there too Are exactly you catch it all in the same yeah so so this 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 plan that you see here has sort of an expanded retail environment so it's, it's definitely more retail um, than was originally proposed and part of that extension includes the reason that it's larger is it includes that Yangtze site um, so we want to show you everything all at once um, procedurally though it'll be two separate applications we're going to do a form-based code application for that site because it's not actually in the King Street Common Zoning District um, that uh, was one of the articles that failed, I think, in January um, to, to, to include that into the uh, zoning district. So it'll be uh, procedurally two different applications, but we want to show you everything, how it all kind of fits together, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Are you planning on bringing back the buffet? <laughs> <laughs> That's above my pay grade. <laughs> um, I, w I would just comment on the hotel. If you can present something where there is, that it enhances the common, <coughs> that it's a signature of the common. I mean, I'm thinking like the Woodstock Inn and Woodstock, mm -hmm. where you just have that iconic. It's iconic. It's like a landmark. Yeah. 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 Then, yeah, I think we'd be interested. But if it's just a generic Marriott we're on not, the. We're not interested in that yeah. either. Yeah. No, we're not interested. I was uh, told, to, I don't want to disparage another brand either, but I was told by Sal I could, I could use words of what it's not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not that. Uh, I won't say the hotel, list of hotel chains that he, that he said I could say, but I won't. Um, it's not that it, it'll be it'll be unique to, to Littleton. So, just another aside is: Would you own the building and and hire an operator, or are you selling the parcel to? I, I don't know. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, I know that there was interest, but I don't know if it's in the form of like a ground lease, yeah, or if it's in in the form of like um, you know turn the property over to a to a um, hotel company and, and then they operate it and own the property themselves. I'm, I'm not sure about that. Okay, I guess I'm trying to get a how much control <coughs> would you have over, any, anyway, it's 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 interesting. Yeah. Um, see what you can come up with, in my view. Yeah, yeah I'm in agreement if it was a boutique. Done. If it's done well. Yeah, mm -hmm. a boutique mm -hmm. experience. It's a I think premier, that'd be nice. yeah, that's a, that's a, um, it's going to be a high visibility location, so I think it needs to be that way. Um, or else, like, we risk the site sort of dying with a bad product out mm -hmm. front. That's just a bad idea. Bad for us, bad for everybody. I think we all want to see more re retail, so I don't think that's an issue. I mean, or uh, restaurants, cafes. Yeah, restaurants. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, re retail is like, it's our catch all word for uh, not residential, right. open to the pub. So, what you see, like, on here, for example, this would be cafes, restaurants, shops. Yeah. You know, there might be like a small fitness center, things, things like that, like uh, doctor's offices, you know, chiropractor, that, that kind of stuff that would be in that sort of first floor walkable. Services for the seniors. Services. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be looking for all kinds of tenants, I'm sure. They love, buf they love buffets. Yeah. <laughs> Just no real terms. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. banks. <laughs> yeah. God, we have enough banks. Really so terrible. one of the, th the other things that, um, or one of the other places, have you take, taken a look at the uh, Groton Inn? No. So because of Indian Hill Music Center moving into Groton, that's now a very fine um, music center. And the Groton Inn is an old-time antique hotel that I guess burned down, like maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. Very and they neat. rebuilt it. Well, they, they didn't rebuild. I mean, they, it's sort of a sort of a facsimile, you know, but right. whatever. Yeah, I wasn't here, so I, I don't you know. You definitely should see that. Yeah, because they, they're it. doing a good business. They built on the site, they built this 
hotel, I, I, maybe 50 rooms, I don't know. Mm. And then they have a freestanding restaurant that's quite nice, has a gorgeous view. But Anna mentions you should also see the Groton Music Center, uh, $138 million. <coughs> oh, and yeah. they're bringing national acts, and um, it's, a, it's an education center, but they have the, the ability to bring in a lot of entertainment. And, they and have those, several, yeah, those yeah. people who are going to the music center are spending big money on those tickets. Yeah. And if the Groton Inn is full, then where are they going to go? Right. So I actually Maybe see... Gra grab a bite to eat while, while they're here for the show. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Well, and that's <laughs> apparently one of the things about the Marriott is it's getting the business... You know, there's several boarding schools in that area mm -hmm. that have a lot of parents coming in and out. And that's one of the big, you know filler ups of anyway so okay. you're on to something okay um but i execution. would definitely go out there and take a look i i personally you know it's okay but it's it, it does have it it doesn't look like the marriott yeah right mm -hmm. yeah i was just commenting that yeah it's, no, that's a good point it's a another one to take a look at yeah we'll do while you're sitting on the hot seat can i go back to mr Sand the questions mr sanders brought up um, the, in the discussion with the governor's office, we did reach out to the Lapoli company, and Mr. Lapoli graciously asked that you be involved in it. Mm -hmm. You've done a great job writing <coughs> the stuff that you've done for us before with bylaws and everything else, that you would at least take a quick look at Bartlett's letter and make yeah. sure that we're all on the same page, the Lapoli company, the planning board. Y yeah, we want to help, uh, and more than just wanting to help, I think we have some self-interest in helping uh, because... <coughs> Uh, Littleton losing access to grant funding mm -hmm. probably yeah. affects us in the future too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we have a we have a want and need to help um, with the, with the situation. So um, whatever we can do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And like I said, one of the things was the dedicated. I think you talked about it anyway, but the, it's going to have to have a dedicated service to the train station. That's right. Yeah, we considered. That's right. We've always talked about a, a transportation center on site that will be formalized um, with our development plan and the shuttle um, that will go from here to the train station and probably other stops as well, yeah. I would imagine. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Even if that's all it did, that yep. would be great. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Board, have any other questions? No. I have one outside question, but Bartlett, what? did you have anything else? No. So that might make me drive the thing, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> My one outside question is, given the event on Tuesday, um, at some point it would be helpful if you could convey to us, uh, you know, anything that you've learned from Mr. Lapoli about what you heard. Sure. Because yeah. you heard a lot of feedback on I Tuesday. I did. Yep. I'm going I'm to see him tomorrow morning. Um, we have meetings to go over other stuff, but I'll, I'll, I'll see what he thinks. My guess is he'll have to get back to me. He's got to probably run yeah. it. You know, we, um, I'll just tell you um, from his perspective, we, we considered condos, you know, early on. I think probably in some of the early discussions with the board, we talked about what's the right mix, rental versus condo. One of the challenges we ran into, though, is, you know, when you start selling off, like, units, let's say, um, control over those areas gets harder to manage if, as, a, as part of a larger development. So um, in that context, I think if we're going to be really successful with the condos, I think we would try to locate them all in one part of the site mm -hmm. um, and right about 410. Four, or 410 mm -hmm. being another option um, mm -hmm. because it, it gets really hard when you know if you've got let's just say 10 different condominium owners above some of these shops things get dicey as it yeah. relates to maintenance and stuff in the in the financing the building gets a little complicated so I think you know if we're going to be able to figure it out it's probably going to be like a standalone building or like 410 um, would be how we would do it but but let me check with Sal I'm going to see him tomorrow Okay. Um, and then terrific. next time I see you guys, I'll let you know. That's terrific. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. Are Perfect. you coming before us with this grand scheme anytime yeah, we soon? Can't, we got a draw, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I so, yeah, yeah. So, I think I think we're, we're working on the package now. Um, I think, I, what did I hear? January 4th kind of meeting time frame. That would give you like a... That'd be like 11th. a 11th. January 11th. So, that would be like a mid-December kind of submission date, mm -hmm. three weeks before. That, that's probably that's probably about about right okay with the right. holidays and stuff so about three weeks from now or, or so given given the holidays we'll be submitting something to you and then we'll see you in the new year perfect thank and you if you want to be here for any reason between now and then just let me know i don't think, so. I think okay. you're good good thank right. you yeah thanks thank guys you. have a great night you too so okay. we have, have the um updated uh, sub subdivision plans to uh for the board to endorse um i'd ask that you endorse them this evening and um i'll hold those and to endorse the covenant, um, again, I'll 
hold that until after the town clerk um, signs um, the, the appeal period. Um, do you want to just roll them out and we'll sign them as we go? That's sure. Do you want to wait for them? No, no, I can't anyway because I have to wait for the appeal period. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Great. Okay, so then moving back, we have 710, 160 year road, Littleton Apothecary. Right? Yep. Do you guys want to discuss it? Do you, I think we probably need to send some direction to the select board. So, Could we just go over the issue here where the <laughs> license is being transferred? No, I don't think the license being transferred is okay. the issue. The issue is whether or not they did anything to execute their special permit with us. We, we had the March letter from that town council Ivria Freed sent to the select board um, that says the um, planning board special permit lapses September what, 20th? This Just now. Yeah. yeah. Recently. Um, there is a uh, caveat that if the planning board can find that there was good cause um, for um, this special permit not being exercised, not being utilized yet, um, then there was the possibility um, that it hadn't lapsed. Um, well. what, wasn't there a COVID cutout or something? Well, um, co right, the COVID uh, extension doesn't apply in this case because um, the uh, permit was granted in 2021 during the oh, state of emergency. That only applies okay. to before March 10th of 2020. Um, so the issue is really whether anything was done, not whether it's for sale or for not. I think that's the least we should be worried about what happens after. That's why we shouldn't be worrying about the lawyer who's trying to buy it telling us what we should and shouldn't do. It. The question is from the board is whether or not anything was done on this. Mm -hmm. And I personally don't think anything was done on it. And I think we should <coughs> say that the special permit is lapsed, send it back to the selectmen, let them decide what they want to do with it. It doesn't mean they can't come back and, and try to renew the special permit or the, who, if somebody wants to buy it, but it gives, gives us a chance to s start the slate all over again or have them come in and ask for a, a new special permit. You know, but the, the original one that they did, they didn't do anything about it. Or at least it, I don't feel they did. It, this just feels weird that the owner you know, we haven't heard, you know, from from the owner, and and so I think that that's important, you know, to be able to hear from from her. So. And the, there's nobody here. But we there's nobody right, here. She, she did reach out, and um, we had a lovely telephone conversation. Um, she said she cho would choose not to come. Um, it's um, she, she did point out that the attorney that had sent the request um, about the special permit lapsing for a good cause did not re represent uh, Littleton Ap Apothecary. However, um, when we dove into it a little more, um, her attorney had provided the responses on regarding the timeline, and she was in agreement with, with the responses on, on the timeline. So she agrees that she, it lapsed. It's just a, a question of whether she did anything to. It, it's right. It's the planning board's um, job now to to make a you know, brief finding mm -hmm. whether you believe there was um, the permit has been exercised or whether it lapsed. I don't think she did anything. I, mean, I don't think she didn't pull a building permit. She didn't uh, submit any plans. She didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So. And then you had the email update this afternoon from uh, Chris Heap that. Basically, basically said the same, same thing. thing. So, but I think we should send it to, the, it's really the selectman's issue rather than ours. Right, because the planning board doesn't deal with the host community agreement. The planning board doesn't agree with the CCC, doesn't, I didn't say the right words, <laughs> doesn't um, have any jurisdiction regarding the HCA nor the CCC license. Yours extends only to the special permit. Site plan and special permit, yep. So. I concur with not I, I mean I don't feel strongly one way or the other on this I mean to I mean I think the two years is arbitrary and whatever so <coughs> if we don't need to take a position on this which is what you were saying that we're just going to send it to what, what are we saying here that it lapsed. That, that it lapsed. lapsed. We need to we take need, a position, yeah. but we need that doesn't mean that they still can't come back. We need to 
Uh, say that it's lapsed, send it to the selectmen and let them decide what they want to okay. do with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. It either lapsed or it didn't lapse. Okay. So and, it, and there seems to be agreement among attorneys and the applicant that it lapsed. I mean, was that's there That's my understanding. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. That doesn't mean she still can't sell them to somebody else and you come in and say, you know, I want to renew the permit. What am I going to do? We need to at least make select board aware. Yes. But your point is, is that that would that permit would first come through a host community agreement with the selectmen, right. and then they would just come to us for the permit. I mean, special permit, permit site again. plan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's got to really go back to the selectmen. I think. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. really their the host community. Their everything else. We're just. It's really basically site plan what we did we approved their site plan mm. and gave them a special permit for it as per the bylaw and now it's time to they have to the select board has to decide if they want to keep going with Littleton Apothecary or open it back up to somebody else that's really their decision not ours correct yeah yep. so I'll make a motion that we send a letter to the selectman that we don't feel that any s substantial there's been no substantial work or anything on the um, this this special yeah. permit, and that it has lapsed after two years, as per our subdivision rules and reg our special permit rules and regulations. <coughs> and uh, right, as per yeah. our zoning bylaw, uh, the uh, special permit has, that it's has lapsed. And we know nothing's been done because there have been no have permits. No or permits. Pulled. Nothing's no, been pulled, no, no permit applications. Building permit applications. Okay. send it off to the selectmen let them handle it so you made a motion that was it seconded I'll second it okay all in favor signify by saying aye 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 aye, aye. great cool we'll do the are we all done we're pretty much I'm sorry Bob you I didn't get you at seven o'clock I'll say blame George you will blame me. <laughs> no, you just blamed me earlier. I'm now I'm kicking the can down the road. I think we're done, right, Mark? So what about this the executive session? Oh, executive session. I'll, I'll give you an update on the executive session. So well, should we turn Wait, off do we need the to turn this off? No, we're not going into executive okay. session. Okay, okay. Right? okay. Um, the, uh, the two litigants, so let's, for lack of a better word, oh, litigants, that's the right word, yeah. can't even agree to agree. So we're not going to, this is the second time that they told us they had an agreement, and in fact, they didn't have an agreement. So I again told Marin to call Chris Heap and tell him that we're not going into executive session. If they can't agree to what they're going to ask us in executive session, then we're not going to have an executive session. I think, um, okay. So there's nothing to discuss. Well, the, the, there's no the, agreement. The, the, the little bit of it that I saw they seem to make us a party of their agreement which well that makes me resentful well that's part of the thing there there are con conditions or um, yeah, yeah, conditions, conditions that we're yeah. gonna have to decide whether we agree to or not agree to but they're trying to agree to make it palatable for both sides so that's why we were going to go into a session but I think moving forward maybe we don't even we need to have them in front of us they're, if they can't even agree to this thing and we have to go into executive session to talk about maybe we should have a public well I guess we could decide that in executive session whether we want to bring them to a public hearing and discuss all the changes that was that one of my involved. questions yeah, yeah I think well we I guess we get if we ever get to executive session that's one of the things we'll ask <laughs> right right that, that and I think Chris agreed that that would Chris he town council agreed that that would should be part of the planning board's discussion Correct. yeah when we get there if the if we ever get there but it doesn't sound like we're ever going to get there We'll still be here. Maybe Delisa won't be, but we'll be by the time this goes. Counting down. Counting down. <laughs> Count down. <laughs> uh, you have the copies of coming in? Yeah, and I'm sure you're going to be watching all the meetings on LCP. Oh, just, just for amusement. No, yeah. I don't have a big glass of wine. Town Council has reviewed the Just so she can laugh. I recently had a meeting with the Planning Board. And because I needed the graphics card for all of that. 
and Marnum. The I covenant is the um, document that secures the construction of the subdivisions. Uh, it's the first form of security. It says you can't do anything, get any building permits without um, putting a uh, bond in place. Basically. Yeah, I'll hold it. All right, okay. Um, the letter, mm -hmm. let me know when you're, you know, mm -hmm. you've got everybody involved in it and everything else. So, mm -hmm. so there's no surprises. Yep. Okay. <coughs> Do you want do you want it in word? Yep. From Bartlett so that you can make corrections to it? That, that, that would be helpful. Bartlett, can you send the, your file that you wrote it on to yep. Lauren so that she can yep. edit it that way? That way she doesn't have to write the whole thing again. Yeah, well, see the, the she's PDF. She's got nothing else to do. Oh, fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have an assistant now. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not throwing the kid into the do. fire right off the bat, you know? <laughs> I've already on, started off on the wrong foot with them, so I'm going to try to pretend, let him think that I'm actually a nice guy. I'm trying, you know. Don't listen to Mr. Sanders in the back. I am a nice guy. Oh, please. No pen. All right. So are we done? I'll take a motion to adjourn. It's an early one for us. Well, we just spent three of these. I think it's three sheets. Yeah. Awesome. Are we done? You want to sign it? I'm just going to vote for the Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Bye. All right. Thank you very much. Hey, Barla, hit the switch. Hit the honors, please. <laughs>